time for Dodger baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Sportsnet LA presents the Dodgers as they take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Hi, everybody, and a very special Thursday evening to you, wherever you may be. Hope it's a pleasant one. Dodgers here at Dodger Stadium, wrapping up a three-game series with the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks are in a tough stretch. They've lost five out of seven, but even more than that. They're three games into a 20-game streak without a day off. They will start the left-hander, and that would be Robbie Ray and Robbie Ray, two and two against the Dodgers lifetime, won only five games last year, but extremely talented. In fact, when he was in high school, he pitched three no hitters and a five inning perfect game. For the Dodgers, Ross Stripling will be on the mound. Remember, he was five outs away from a no-hitter. Had to take him out, however, in San Francisco. Big surprise that night, and we'll see if he can come back again strong this evening. He made 100 pitches when he was up there at AT&T Park. So those are the settings. It'll be the Dodgers, who now are technically a half a game behind the Giants, who lost in Colorado. And we'll be back with a whole lot more right after this.
is brought to you by T-Mobile. Get Major League coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Thursday evening to you. Welcome to Dodger Stadium, the final game of the three-game series with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Lovely evening. And last night, I think the lowest temperature was about 59. The game started at 65, so it was pretty good. The leadoff man, Gene Segura, will start it off, and we'll take a look at the Diamondback lineup. Segura will be followed by Socrates Brito in center field. Paul Goldsmith, Mr. Thunder, as far as the Dodgers are concerned, is at first base. David Peralta in right. Brandon Drury in left. Jake Lamb at third. Chris Herman is the catcher. Robbie Ray batting eighth, the pitcher, as Chip Hale plays it. And batting ninth is Nick Ahmed. On the mound, Ross Stripling. Stripling is a very, very intelligent fellow. Remember, he had troubles, finally had Tommy John surgery, pitched seven and a third innings without allowing a hit and favoring the arm. Dave Roberts said his career is at stake, not the game, and he took Ross out. His first pitch to Segura in for a strike and the count on one. Why he is so clever? Well, among other things, he is a licensed stockbroker as he works on Gene Segura. Strike one pitch foul back. To be a stockbroker in Texas, he had a seven hour test that he had to pass, and he got his license. The temperature is exactly the same as last night 65 degrees, and Gene Segura at the plate. Followed by Socrates Brito and then Paul Goldsmith. Pitch low. You know, Segura was involved in a wild play. Let's see if we can duck it in. He singled and stole second. Ryan Brock walked. They decided to pull off a double steal. The throw went to third. Segura stopped and went back to second. Braun was on second base, and it was Braun who was called out. But Segura didn't realize it. And Segura walked off the field. The, his club was on the first base side. But before he could get off the field, the first base coach hollered, and he ran over to first base and was declared safe. He hits one up the middle for a base hit. Big argument, and the play was allowed, and Segura stayed at first. However, Major Leagues later on said it was against the rules. Oh, sure, Ryan Braun was called out. That was correct. But Segura, who was at second base, wound up at first, and you can't run backwards, and that was it. And that was based on a remarkable play way back in the early 1900s. Have you ever heard of? Germany Schaefer well we'll tell you about it but right now Socrates Brito is the man Segura who runs well he's over at first the first pitch of the plate a little high ball one to Brito so for stripling there is certainly no pressure about hacking on to innings to that seven and a third scoreless game that he had against San Francisco on deck and I'm sure stripling well aware of Paul Goldsmith. Little roller to the right side. The tag is safe, and the throw to first is out. And now let's watch the second base umpire. It looked like at first that Quinn called him safe, that maybe the tag was missed. But now they're saying no. They're running up, and well, you just saw they're going to call him out. We're just waiting to see if the play is going to be reviewed or not. And from the looks of things, no, but that was a very close tag. Well, here he is, one of the biggest boppers to ever come to Dodger Stadium. The best, Roberto Clemente at 377. Second, Brad Hopp, 362. And then, big Paul Goldsmith. So we have two down in the first inning. Goldsmith followed by David Peralta. Stripling ready, and the strike one pitch low. Germany Schaefer remember that in case we run out of outs here in the first inning and we'll tell you all about him. Here's the one one pitch on the way and that's taken for a strike and the count one one and two. Stripling gets that double play ball on the tag by Austin Barnes maybe 
The one two pitch chase fouled and Goldie's still there. Paul Goldschmidt the all around player without a doubt. What makes it so tough is he is the number one standout player. He has three home runs nine RBIs. But for the Dodgers not a bad idea to walk him every time he takes in the dirt and they count two and two. David Peralta hits back of him. A.J. Pollock they lost when he fractured an elbow going head first into home plate in an exhibition game. So that was a terrible blow. 2 2 pitch on the way. Goldie swings, ground ball to short. Seeger up with it. Does a little two step, throws him out, and that's the inning. So Segura singles, Brito grounds into a double play. Goldie grounds to short, and at the end of half an inning, no score. Get out of the inning on a double play, by the way, when the second base umpire, Quinn Walcott, pointed, and I thought he was ruling safe. He was ruling that the runner was running out of the baseline. So with that cleared up, here's the Dodger lineup. Kike Hernandez leaning off in left field, and Yasiel Puig in right. Adrian Gonzalez at first base, Howie Kendrick at third. Corey Seager at short, Trace Thompson in center, A.J. Ellis behind the plate, Austin Barnes at second, and Ross Stripling on the mound. Robbie Ray on the mound, and the left-hander misses down and away. Ball one. Ray is the boy in high school, was just too big for the campus. Three no-hitters and a five-inning perfect game. Robbie's 1-0 pitch, foul back, and the count one and one. Arizona needs a lift and Robbie Ray trying to give it for him. He's a gold medalist back in 09. He was on Team USA's under 18 team and that club won the gold medal defeating seven time champion Cuba. The 1 1 pitch fastball high 2 and 1. Kike Hernandez trying to get the Dodgers started now in the first inning. Robbie turns left handed comes back flips it in nicely for a strike and the count two and two for Robbie Ray well he's been traded twice the Nationals sent Ray to the Detroit Tigers then he wound up coming over to Arizona 2 2 pitch and that's a slider low and in and the count three and two the word on Robbie Ray he might very well be a starting pitcher and for many years in the big leagues. He's 6 2 and about 195. The 3 2 pitch, he works in a hurry and he's low, ball four. So Hernandez draws the walk and here comes Yasiel Puig. Right Yasiel wearing number 66 Yasiel and that is a reminder. And I'm sure we'll hear more about it later on. But Tommy and Joe Lasorda are celebrating their 66th wedding anniversary. Tonight. God bless them both. 
And Joe was here with a couple of familiar faces. Sharon Huff. Her husband Charlie Huff pitched for many years here and of course with great success in Miami. Yvonne Stevenson whose husband was a great figure around these parts Jerry Stevenson. And Joe Lasorda herself. Glenn Sherlock on the phone. We're in the bottom of the first inning. Robbie Ray ready to go to work with Hernandez at first. Nobody out, no score. For the Arizona D backs, they're struggling. They've lost five of the last seven. Ray quickly to the plate, fastball up or above the belt for a strike. 0 and 1 to Yasiel, who nods to the plate umpire, Mike Carlson. Good strike. 0 and 1. Just starting, bottom of the first inning. The Rockies beat the Giants 11 to 6. Next one swung on and missed. Big swing by Yasiel. 0 and 2. De La Rosa, the winning pitcher, came the loser. The Rockies scored nine runs in the fifth inning. In fact, the Rockies mauled the Giants 23 runs in three games. Strike two pitch coming up. Robbie Ray delivers and in there just above the letters fastball strike. So down goes Yasiel one away and Adrian Gonzalez coming up. By the way I was telling you about Gene Segura and his base running antics. It goes all the way back, believe it or not, to a game in 1911. There was a player named Germany Schaefer, and his club in the ninth inning in a tied up game had runners at first and third. And Schaefer stole second, hoping the catcher would commit to let the runner at third, Milan, score the winning run, but the catcher let him steal. All right, here's Adrian. And the fastball, a chopper to short. Easy step on and throw to first. And a big double play, and the Dodgers are done. So, more about Germany Schaefer. Runners at first and third in the ninth, but at the end of an inning, no score. Score will pick up quickly about Gene Segura. We told you about how he got to first base, etc. Germany Schaefer is at first base. Clyde Milan is at third, 1911. Milan with the winning run. So Schaefer steals second, hoping to get a throw from the catcher. It didn't arrive. So now the club head run is at second and third. And the first pitch to David Peralta drops in for a strike. What did Schaefer do standing at second? He stole first. That's right. He stole first. Here's the strike one pitch high and inside. 
And what really shocked everybody, he's on second base and he takes his lead. But his lead was not towards the shortstop. His lead was toward first base. And everybody looks at there and says, are you kidding me? Strike one pitch is a little low. Well, anyway, with Schaefer dancing around off first base, they pick him off. And there's now a big rundown between first and second. Milan finally decides he might try and score, and they throw him out. But that brought up the ruling. You cannot run the bases backwards, and you cannot go to first base after you had previously occupied second. And that's the story on Gene Segura with an assist from Germany Schaefer. Meanwhile, Peralta grounds to second, and we have one away in the second inning. Great game, isn't it? The fielder number 27. All Brandon you have to Drury. do is dig a little deep. Here's Brandon Drury. Drury against the Dodgers has two home runs, batting 429 in the past. Brandon, another good young outfielder. Hard chopper to third behind the bag, fielding it is Kendrick and makes the play. So Howie Kendrick, who's played left field last night, starts at third base. Nothing wrong with third Justin Turner. You probably know he was hit twice last night on the hand, but they say he's okay. He's just going to get a little rest. And Kendrick doing the job. Justin leaning on the railing. Look out at things. He could use a rest. Hard playing third baseman. And of course, getting him rested as well for Madison Bumgarner tomorrow night. Two down, here's Jake Lamb, and the fastball is off the plate, ball one. Jake, another fine young player, hitting 286, and really does a lot of damage against left hand pitching. He's a left hand hitter facing the right handed stripling. Has a look at a strike. Lamb last night had a bad night. Four trips to the plate and never touched the ball. He walked and struck out three times. So Stripling trying to put him away with two out and the one one pitch Jake fouls it off and the count one and two. So the young players Drury and Lamb Brito Segura trying to lead Arizona back. One ball and two strikes the count and the next one off speed two balls two strikes. By the way, our heartiest congratulations to Chris Hatcher and his wife Jenny. Tell you why. 2 2 pitch on the way. Hit foul off third, back into the crowd. Born April the 14th. His name, Jensen Thomas Hatcher. Seven pounds, five ounces, 20 inches at 1.04 p.m. today. Mom and baby doing great. So hugs to Jenny, handshakes to Chris, and love to all three of them. Count now goes all the way. Stripling, three and two, Lamb waiting. Chris Herman, another left hand batter on deck. Three two, off the plate, 93 mile an hour fastball. So a two out pass to Lamb, and Chris Herman number 10. coming up. Dave Roberts, eyes riveted on Stripling. Stripling's dad congratulated Dave Roberts. There was a little controversy about taking Ross out after he was pitching a no hitter for seven and a third. And Dave met Stripling's dad. And Stripling's dad said, I completely agree with you. I'm glad you took him out. 92 fastball for a strike. 0 and 1 the count to Chris Herman. Stripling looking over at first at Lamb. Back he comes to the catcher. Over the top curveball, big slow spinner. Swung on and missed. And the count 0 and 2. Boy, that was some big curveball. Chris Herman out of the University of Miami. He's a Texan, however. Lives in Tomball, Texas. Now the strike two pitch ready 
Stripling changes and loses and is high and away. One ball and two strikes. Chris Herman came up with the Minnesota Twins and spent a few years with the Twins. Came over from Rochester to join Arizona. It was a deal for a first baseman, Daniel Palka. The next pitch, breaking ball in the dirt, swung on and missed. Herman is nailed at first. No runs, no hits, a walk, and a man left. And at the end of an inning and a half, no score. Move into the bottom of the second inning. No score between the Dodgers and Arizona. For the Dodgers, a half a game behind the Giants. So wouldn't that be sweet to have the Dodgers win tonight? And both the Giants and the Dodgers, Bruce Boshi and Dave Roberts, we all be tied for first place. And game one of the weekend series coming up with Kershaw and Bumgarner. Howie Kendrick played left field last night, third base now, and takes inside. Well, we heard all spring training that the Dodger players will have to be versatile, and that's exactly what they have. Quite a few versatile players. The 1 0 pitch, and that's a little low, ball two. So Kendrick, who has had a great career at second base, played left field last night, third base tonight. Chase Utley will play second and third, and they're going to be moving around like chess pieces. Certainly with 11 men on the DL they had better be versatile. The next one is low ball three three and oh the count. Robbie Ray ready and the fastball at the knees for a strike and the count three and one. The starting pitchers for Arizona are 0 and six. Here's the three one pitch. Fastball, a shot up the middle, a base hit for Howie Kendrick. So Kendrick, the third baseman, leads off with a single to center. And friends, you know, you can get the best seats at the best price with an 11 game pick 'em plan. You choose the games you want, including great giveaways, as well as the so called big games with the Giants, the Angels, and the Red Sox. So visit Dodgers.com slash mini plans. So Kendrick aboard with a base hit, hit number one of Robbie Ray, and Corey Seager checking in. Ray ready and delivers way off the plate. Herman ready to throw as he came up out of his crouch. Seager had his 11 game hitting streak snapped last night. He's hitting 372, however, during that streak. One ball and no strikes. 
Ray at the belt, Kendrick at first, and the pitch low and away, ball two. You wonder if Kendrick would be asked to run. Remember, he was sidelined with a tight calf. George Lombard has talked to him, and Dave Roberts pulling at the bill of the cap. We'll see what that means. Ray at the belt, not running. And there's a hard ground ball backhanded by Goldsmith to short for one and back to first for the double play with the pitcher really ably and assisted by Paul Goldsmith. Great play by the Arizona first baseman diving that looked like a base hit, not only taking it away from Seeger, but turning it into a double play. So it went 3 6 3, and just like that, two down. Alertly, Ray was over there to see if he had a hand in it, but didn't have to as Goldie got back to the bag. So two down, the man who can hurt you anyway, bat and glove, just takes a hit away, and the Dodgers instead have two out, nobody on. Trace Thompson playing center field, takes a pitch high with a left hand going. Jock Peterson sits down. Trace off to a very good start hitting 462 and I know it's early but he's already had a good time against left hand pitching Thompson takes under the elbows and a two ball no strike count no score bottom of the second inning final game with Arizona and the Giants coming up 2 0 pitch on the way swung on squirted foul at the end of the bat. Two and one. For the Giants, of course, coming here, and the Dodgers would like to return the favor. The Giants let the air out of the Dodger balloon after three shutout games in San Diego. They lost three out of four. Clayton Kershaw will be on the mound tomorrow night. Two one pitch swung on, foul back upstairs to the right, and the count two and two. The pitching for that giant series Kershaw and Bumgarner then Johnny Cueto and Scott Casimir first two games of the series two balls and two strikes Ray ready here he comes check swing the pitch inside 95 mile an hour fastball so Robbie Ray let that one fly. No score in the second on deck A.J. Ellis double play slowing down the Dodgers so he's hit into two double plays in two innings. The next pitch swung on and fouled away upstairs. So Trace Thompson hanging in there hacking them three and two count. Arizona into three games of a 20 game straight streak without a day off. So three and two the count. Here comes Ray the left hander and he's low and inside ball four. That would be his second walk. Catcher number seven. So he's allowed two walks but he's induced the Dodgers getting into two double plays. And then Ellis coming up. So Kershaw and Bumgarner. Queto and Casimir and Samarja against Maeda. All right, Ray looks over at Thompson. Ellis batting seventh in the lineup. AJ backs away from a pitch inside. Ball one. Dodgers trying to get on the board. AJ back up. Last night, Yasmani Grandal caught. 1 0 pitch on the way, and that's inside. Talking about versatility of the Dodgers, Austin Barnes, who is on deck, basically a catcher, and Barnes is playing second base tonight, giving Utley a chance to rest. But boy, the movable pieces, and we'll see just how that holds up. Randall sitting alongside Rick Honeycutt. Two balls, no strikes. By the way, both dugouts would appear to be quiet. Reading the papers today, there was a lot of yelling, apparently, 
from the Dodger dugout and the Arizona dugout. Six players hit by pitches in the first two games. Ray is high and tight ball three. Naturally when you're up here you can't hear anybody and unless somebody tells you and points out who's yelling pretty hard to even guess. Hopefully all of that has simmered down. 3 0 pitch on the way and that's taken for a strike three and one. You know the old story pretty good battle here a couple of years ago and then when the Dodgers clinched the Western Division the guys jumped into the Arizona pool and people were offended for a little while. Here's a 3 1 pitch AJ takes off the plate. So that's the third walk given up by Robbie Ray, but he does have two out in the first inning and Mike Butcher going out to talk to him in the first inning Hernandez walked, but with one out Gonzalez hit into a double play here in the second Kendrick single Seeger hit into a double play robbed by Paul Goldsmith but now Thompson and Ellis walk and the batter is Austin Barnes. So Austin Barnes catcher and infielder. Second baseman batting eighth in the lineup. Stripling oh, on deck. Second baseman number 28 Austin Robbie Barnes. Ray in his career at Dodger Stadium had worked 12 and two third innings and allowed only two runs and seven hits. He's one and one here and he is two and two lifetime. The interesting thing about Ray he is far more successful on the road than he is at home. So with two on and two out his pitch in for a strike to Austin Barnes. Barnes certainly getting not much of a chance to play hitting 143. Ray is one and six at home. He gets on the road he's four and six. Robbie ready another look at the runners. The left hander deals in the fastball high and away. One ball and one strike. Just checking Ray, how has he been doing? He had six innings under his belt when he got here, and he had walked four. So he's now quite eight innings, not quite, and he has walked seven. So he's fighting. One on one to Robbie. Waiting on deck Ross Stripling and the one one pitch on the way a look at the run as a whirl and a throw high off the glove of second baseman Segura and over to third base goes Thompson. I think Robbie Ray was trying to use a little bit of magic. It wasn't a routine of where he just stepped off the rubber not indeed he was set turned and had his man a bit but the high throw to Segura and went off Gene's glove got into center field and the Dodgers now have first and third on the era charge to the pitcher Ross Ross Stripling's opponent Robbie Ray for Arizona they made three errors last night so first and third two out one and one the count to Austin Barnes. Ray at the belt. Robbie comes with a fastball in at the knees at 94. The starting pitching for Arizona. The starters are 0 and 6, and the earned run average collectively 6.7. Here's the 1 2 pitch on the way, taken in the dirt. Curveball in the dirt at the feet. 2 and 2. So. Robbie Ray struggling a little bit. Nice save by Chris Herman. No score. Second inning. Deuces wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out, and two on at the corners. Ray at the belt. The 2 2 pitch on the way. Swung on and foul back to the screen. So the difference between the two teams Arizona having trouble with the starting pitching so they can't get to the bullpen to save a game. The Dodgers getting great work from the starters and as you know troubles in the bullpen. Kenley Jansen getting five outs last night first time in his career. 
Fastball is swung on and missed at 96, and that just blows Barnes away. So no runs, one hit, two walks, and an error. And the Dodgers come up empty, and at the end of two, no score. Ballpark, each side with a base hit. Arizona with an error. Robbie Ray worked awfully hard. He'll be leading off. He made 26 pitches, has made 36 pitches in his two innings. And Ross Stripling getting ready to face him. Looking at these, these two teams, it's somewhat shocking. In this series, the Dodgers with runners in scoring position, it's breathtaking. 0 oh, for 17. D backs are struggling as well with runners in scoring position. They're 0 for 10. So we got two offers here, no score in the third. And here's Robbie Ray. Stripling ready to leave is a little high. Ball one. By the way, you know the Dodgers had two men on in the second inning and Austin Barnes struck out and that's not news to anyone following Robbie Ray with two men on base. The hitters are batting less than 165 so Austin don't feel so bad. The next pitch chased and missed Ray swinging just like a pitcher and they count one and two. Stripling ready. One two pitch on the way is swung on and missed. Breaking ball, and that takes care of Robbie. Two strikeouts now for Ross Stripling and the batter, Nick Ahmed. Nick Ahmed hit a home run in the third inning last night, and in game one, he homered in the seventh inning. So Ahmed has nailed the Dodgers twice. In the three game series, a lot of noise for a batter hitting ninth in the lineup. Two home runs, three runs scored, and hitting 296. So Nick waiting, stripling into the windup, delivers and gets it in for a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Ahmed long and lean good shortstop swings at an off speed curveball kind of a change curve and Ahmed way out in front of it. Nick ready and get back in. No score top of the third. Ross Stripling turns on the rubber strike two pitch high ball one one and zero. Oh. We were talking a little while ago about Ross Stripling.
being a licensed stockbroker. So they were talking to him in the locker room since he is licensed talking about would he handle their money pitch fouled away. And some of the guys said yeah maybe, maybe you would do the job. Would it cost much. And Stripling said no no. I might not even charge some of you. But he said I charge Kershaw. <laughs> you bet. One and two the count. Stripling takes a long time before coming back to Ahmed. And the pitch in there on the inside corner at 91. Ahmed couldn't believe it. Shakes his head no to plate umpire Mark Carlson and walks away. That's three strikeouts in a row. Chip Hale shakes his head. And here comes Ahmed back. Pitch wound up lower as far as the catcher is concerned. But while it was coming over the plate, had to be a little borderline. And of course, what bothers the hitter if they think the pitch is called where the catcher caught it. So the pitch now to Segura misses. One ball and no strike. So three straight strikeouts for Ross Stripling. And here is Segura, who brought back memories of Germany Schaefer. 1 0 pitch on the way. Of course, Segura, again, for those who have not been watching, listening, or reading about the games, Segura, because of a collision in the outfield by the Cubs, had two home runs. The first one inside the park. And the next one he hit out. A chopper off the glove of Stripling deflected to Barnes, who had to double clutch and then throw him out. So it's a 1 4 3 play. Down go the D backs, and at the end of two and a half innings, no score. The third no score Ross Stripling and Robbie Ray interesting thing about Robbie Ray like every pitcher you want to find out is he pitching on four days rest five days rest and watch the difference. Well there is a difference he is very effective on five days rest and that's exactly how he is tonight Been a little while but that's it and starts off with a strike and the count 0 and 1. Stripling from Bluebell, Pennsylvania. And then strike one pitch on the way. High fastball swung on and missed. Five days rest. Ray's ERA is 2.9. Four days rest, he is 0 and 8 with an ERA over 5. Well, that'll do it for Stripling. Down he goes. Consecutive strikeouts now for Robbie Number Ray 14, nailing Kiki Barnes Hernandez. to end the second inning. 
One away, bottom of the third, Kike Hernandez coming up. Hernandez walked, but was out on the double play ball. Hit to the shortstop by Adrian Gonzalez. Ray turns, left-handed delivers, little slider, drops in for a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Ray has been a pretty good pitcher, although it's not reflected in his record. Strike one pitch, swung on and missed, 0 and 2. As far as Robbie Ray is concerned, somehow can I get out of August? Do I have to pitch on August? In his career, he's made nine starts in August, and he is 0 and 8. Strike two pitch, lifted down the right field line, slicing as she goes, coming over and reaching up to backhand at his Peralta. They're not sure. Yeah, they called out. So Hernandez, a fly ball down the line. David Peralta makes a good play in the corner. Rubbed his left elbow a little bit, but two down. There he is, reaching for the wall, then up for the glove, and there's the elbow hitting the wall. The edge of it rather than the padding itself. Nice play. So two down in the third inning, and here's Yasio Pui. It is struck out in the first inning. Here in the ballpark, they just saluted Joe and Tommy Lasorda on their 66th. And Yasiel reminding everybody as he strokes one in the left field for a base hit. Brandon Drury is up with it. Puig holding it first. The Yasiel doing everything right. That base hit will get him to 400. Went down to get it around the knees and single left. So that'll bring up Adrian Gonzalez. So Yasiel listening to George Lombard, the coach at first. Adrian hit a chopper up the middle, and Ahmed grabbed it on the run, stepped on the bag, and easily doubled him at first. That was the first inning. Pitch away, ball one, 95 mile an hour fastball. Adrian Gonzalez, year in and year out, always starts out with great numbers, hitting 389 in the early going this year. One ball and no strikes. Ray next finds the outside corner at 94, so the balance is his books. One ball and one strike. He's having a lot of trouble, is Ray, with the numbers one and two hitters. And tonight, Hernandez a walk and Puig a single. Ray comes back. Adrian hit a soft one hopper to second. Quick flip to Ahmed. So Adrian really jammed. It sounded like he hit it with the morning paper. So no runs, one hit, a man left. And at the end of. is brought to you by the Dodge Challenger. Test drive one at your local Dodge dealer today. 
and by Carl's Jr., the Midnight Moonshine Burger with moonshine glaze and garlic pepper onion straws, only at Carl's Jr. We're going to the fourth inning. No score. Very pleasant evening here at Dodger Stadium. Remember, the Giants are coming, so we certainly hope you'll spend part of uh, the weekend with us starting tomorrow night. Leading off in the fourth inning, Socrates Brito. Stripling ready, right hander over the top, off speed and high, ball one. Brito faking a bunt. We gave you the whole number in the first game of the series about Socrates. Let's just settle to say he was a famous Greek philosopher. Takes low, two balls and no strikes. I think he was born around 470 BC, so it's a long time ago. On deck, Paul Goldschmidt. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Brito fouls it back, 2 and 1. One of the nice things that happened in our booth with Boyd Robertson right here, we talked about Ross Stripling saying that he lives in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. Off speed pitch for a strike, 2 and 2. Well, Boyd looked it up. Bluebell, Pennsylvania, population 6,067. 2 2 pitch, a chopper foul. Originally, Bluebell was known as Pigeon Town after flocks of the now non existent passenger pigeons that once gathered there. Where is Bluebell? Not as far away as you would might think, just 22 miles outside of Philadelphia. 2 2 pitch on the way. Lifted foul off to the left, well back into the crowd. Socrates Brito hit into a double play in the first inning. He did not play in last night's game, did play in game one, tripled in the ninth inning. Two and two the count. And the pitch to Brito is low, ball three. Fastball down. So Brito, Goldschmidt, and Peralta, the numbers. Two, three, and four hitters to test the stockbroker again. Three, two pitch on the way. And Brito pokes it in the air to left field. Long way to run for Hernandez, and he is there at the left field foul line. So Kike, with a left hand batter, still able to get a good jump and run that down. One away. Well, here he comes. Paul Goldsmith. What well, has to gall the Dodgers, if they even remember, with the different change of management, the Dodgers drafted Goldschmidt. He was the 49th round draft pick, too. But he went to Texas State, stayed around, and when he finally came back, he was worth a lot of money, and here he is. Strike one pitch on the way. One ball, one strike. We had great numbers last year. 38 doubles, 33 home runs, 110 runs batted in, fouls it away. Every work Goldsmith has played, he's put up big numbers. Arizona expecting nothing less from him. Met his wife at Texas State, so that was a smart move as well. Fastball low, two balls and two strikes. He's a little bit superstitious. Little chopper speared by Stripling. Two down. Goldie says, as far as his routines are going, if things are going well, six, he'll repeat what he ate or what shoe he put on first. Wow. If it's going bad, I'll try to mix it up. And he said, you know, usually everyone eats in the clubhouse, but if I need to turn my ruckle around, I go out of the clubhouse and get a hamburger. Paul Goldschmidt. All you have to do is look at his number and you know where he ranks. Number 44. That great number worn by, oh, among others. Henry Aaron, Willie McCovey. Strike one pitch, fouled away off to the left. 
David Peralta. Good story. David a pitcher hurt his arm. Released by the Cardinals went home. Worked hard became a hitter. His father helped him a lot in hitting. And it's nice to hear about somebody who battled his way back. Wasn't easy. One ball and two strikes change in the dirt. Nine years, five leagues, three countries, and two continents. David Peralta. We mentioned it uh, sometime during the series. He has an iPad which shows his first hit in the major leagues, June 1, 2014. Ground ball, and there's nobody there. Over third down the line. Hernandez going into foul ground to get it. Peralta into second base with a stand up double. The finish to that note about the iPad, every night before he goes to bed, Drury. so the story goes, he turns on the iPad and punches up his first big league hit two years ago. And as he said, it just makes him more restful, content, and he can go to sleep. So dad worked hard and it's paid off. So a two out double. Brandon Drury now trying to pick him up. Drury grounded to third in the second inning. No score in the ball game. We're in the fourth. Big breaking ball down and away. Ball one. One and oh. A stripling trying to get out of the jam. No runs, two hits for each team. 1 0 pitch. That's low, ball two. Drury up there with Lamb on deck. Stripling, kind of slowing things down for the moment. Ground ball wide of third. A long throw. That'll do it. So no runs, one hit. Man left at second at the end of three and a half. No score. A reminder Saturday at 610 Dodgers and Giants and the first 40,000 fans in attendance receive a Dodger branded knit cap compliments of coffee bean and tea leaf for tickets visit Dodgers.com slash promotions and here's Howie Kendrick.
Ray into the windup gets out in front with a strike with a change up. Robbie Ray has been hurt on the 3 1 count. Kendrick singled on the 3 1 count but a comebacker off the glove of Ray picks it up plenty of time and Kendrick is out. Another interesting note about Robbie Ray. He has now faced 54 batters here Seager. at Dodger Stadium. What are the Dodgers heading against Robbie Ray? 170. Nine hits and 54 at bats. So here is Seeger. Hit the ball hard and Paul Goldsmith smothered it. Took a hit away from Seeger, turned it into a double play. Big chopper backing up fair ball Goldsmith to his pitcher Ray and just like that two out. Number 21. Trace so before Thompson. you know it two down Trace Thompson coming up walked and got around a third in the second inning. Robbie Ray pitched very well against the Chicago Cubs and the Cubs are a very good team. Robbie. Went six innings, allowed just a couple of hits, two runs. So his second out is tonight, and right now doing very well. Bottom of the fourth inning, he's allowed two hits, a little bit wild. He's walked three. Shoots the fastball in there. Three walks. He's also struck out three. Oh and one. Lifted, slicing foul. Should go wind up in the seats, and that's where he is. Whoa, what a kangaroo hop. No balls and two strikes to Trace Thompson. Thompson did not play last night. Jock Peterson was out there. Thompson started in game one. And had a couple of hits, one two for three. Fastball lifted back of the infield, going out in a hurry is Socrates. He comes in to watch his second baseman, Gene Segura. So a nice defensive play to end the inning. And all of a sudden, four quick innings in the books. Another look at Segura. And at the end of the four, no score. Sportsnet LA is brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Get huge cash back on a new Camry or a Corolla at Toyota's Axe the Tax Sales event. No score in the fifth inning as Ross Stripling and Robbie Ray locked in a good one. No runs, two hits for each side. One error by the Diamondbacks. Dodgers have gotten one man to third the only man to get that far in the game that was Thompson 
They've got the third in the second inning. So Jake Lamb hitting 286. He'll be followed by Chris Herman, the catcher, and then Robbie Ray. Remember, the pitcher bats eighth in a Chip Hale lineup. Just off the plate, off speed. Lamb walked in the second inning. Stripling walking one has struck out three. And Lamb a high fly ball to right. Puig a late start gets to the track. Makes the catch. I'm not sure he had some trouble picking the ball off leaving the bat. But it was high enough and he was able to go back to get it. How do you know if an outfielder is getting a jump when the ball is hit you look at him if he is just standing still he does not have a jump though so Puig didn't have a jump but was OK. So one down and Chris Herman left hand hitting catcher checking in. Ball one. Herman 0 for one. Backing up the starting pitcher. Wellington Castillo. One ball and one strike. Stripling has allowed two hits. He struck out three in a row. And he's off the plate. Arizona will go to San Diego and they finish up in San Francisco. So that's a nice road trip straight up and down the West Coast. Big swing. And Herman comes up empty. A six footer, 195 pounds. He'll be 28 late in November. Fouled away. For Herman, he grew up an Astro fan. He lived in the Houston area, but he really idolized Pudge Rodriguez. He was an All American at Alva Community College, drafted by the Orioles, didn't sign, then transferred to Miami and hit 341 for the Hurricanes. Checks on a pitch in the dirt, and they count three and two. November of last year, with Ray waiting on deck, Minnesota traded Herman to Arizona. Three and two. And drives one to the gap. There's nobody there. That's on the way to the wall. Over to pick it up and get it back in. Trace Thompson into second base standing with a long double is Chris Herman. His last year with Minnesota. Number 38, Robbie Ray. He had pretty good time, hit 272. The Herman, the long double. That's the second double in consecutive innings. David Peralta doubled with two out in the fourth. The Herman doubles with one out in the fifth. So now you have the pitcher batting eighth, Robbie Ray. And then batting ninth, Nick Ahmed. I foul. That should go back into the stands, and it does. We'll repeat the idea that Chip Hale has. Ahmed runs well, following the pitcher who doesn't figure to get aboard. Ahmed could get aboard and do some running. Also, Ahmed hitting ninth gives Hale what he thinks of a cleanup spot for Goldsmith because the number nine hitter is Ahmed. Then you have Segura, Brito, and Goldsmith. So speed and a little extra power from the lineup with the shortstop batting ninth. And by the way, Ahmed loves it, he says. He loves hitting ninth. Hitting ninth, he has not had much of a chance to steal the bases that he talked about. He hasn't gotten one yet. 0 oh 2. And down he goes at big overhand kind of a change it doesn't come up there in a hurry at all. So Ray strikes out a second time. That's four strikeouts for Ross Stripling. And now here comes Ahmed. 
Ahmed struck out in the third, but he has two home runs. There's that big overhand breaking ball that comes up in the high 70s. Of course, striking out the pitcher, what is it? Like kissing your sister? Isn't that the old line? All right. So Ahmed trying to pick up Herman from second base. Fastball low. Stripling pitching to a hard working shortstop. He was in 134 games last year for Arizona. He had nine home runs, 34 runs batted in. And he promptly bangs it to right. Quig spears it on one hop, makes the long throw, not in time. And down to second base easily goes Ahmed. So batting ninth in the lineup, it pays off. Ahmed singles to right. Herman scores. And on the throw to the plate, Ahmed winds up at second base. If we could, could we look at that one more time? I want to see how Puig played that one hopper. Let's take a look. He backs up, catches it on the glove side, then turns. That's too much time. You can't do that. That's not where he's supposed to be. And as he turns and he throws that big high pitch, no chance. And ball one to Segura. Yasiel acting like uh, he wasn't loose, isn't loose. Something's wrong. Because that was not Puig. Normally, he'll charge a base hit and throw an arrow. But not that. He was completely out of phase. Late and foul. One and one, the count to Gene Segura. So Ahmed, base hit, run batted in. One to nothing, Arizona. Arizona has lost five of its last seven. Segura, marvelous player, off to a great start at 417. Almost hit him. Segura knows what hell is like. Lost a nine month old son when he was in Milwaukee. Took him quite a while to get over that. Two and one. A dancing Ahmed at second and a fly ball in the right center, but it's a room service fly ball as it came to Pui. However, a double and a single. Arizona gets a run thanks to Chris Herman's leadoff double, and at the end, the four and a half, one nothing, Diamondback.
a base hit to drive in the run. And off we go. One to nothing, Arizona. Low at the ankles. Ellis walked in his only trip to the plate. By the way, we showed you Nick Ahmed a brief second ago or two, and a big reason for him. Nick Ahmed gets the first hit with a runner in scoring position in the series. Arizona is 1 for 14. The Dodgers are 0 for 17. 1 and 2. Check swing on Ellis, still alive. And that's lifted into shallow right field. Peralta got a good jump. So Ellis a pop fly. Austin Barnes coming up. Barnes Number struck out in Austin the second Barnes. inning. So Austin 0 for 1. Robbie Ray who figured to pitch well. He's a very good pitcher. Oh and one. We were looking up something that we had oh discovered years ago and especially comes to mind since Nick Ahmed has a base hit to drive in the run he wears number 13. One and one. It's an untrue old fashioned belief that number 13 is an unlucky number. It's a worldwide belief but it does not hold up. That's a strike. You'll almost never see a room numbered 13 or any hotel or motel with a 13th floor. But think the other way about number 13. Look at the dollar bill, for instance. America relies on God, not a number, to direct and lead. There were 13 original colonies, 13 signers of the Declaration of Independence. 13 stripes on the flag, 13 steps on the pyramid on your dollar bill, 13 letters in E pluribus unum. On that dollar bill, there are 13 stars above the eagle, 13 bars on the shield, 13 leaves on the olive branch, 13 fruits, and if you look very closely, 13 arrows. Another foul ball, and finally, if you're looking at the dollar bill, notice the arrangement of the 13 stars in the right-hand circle. You'll see that they are arranged as a star of David. So nothing wrong rooting for number 13. Two and two the count, one to nothing in favor of Arizona. Barnes with the pitcher. Stripling on deck. Robbie Ray figured to be tough and he is. He only won five games and lost 12 last year. But we all knew that he's a better picture than that and he's really slowly coming into his own. Three and two. Fastball hammered foul down into the chairs and Kicks out out onto the field. So immediately, Chris Herman goes to the mound to talk to Robbie Ray. Barnes came up with runners at first and third and two out in the second inning, but struck out on a good fastball. Robbie Ray made 52 pitches in the first four innings. He now made another 12. Three and two. That wiggled low ball four. So Barnes draws the walk. That would be the fourth walk given up by Robbie Ray. He's managed to strike out three 
And now here comes Ross Stripling who struck out and he'll be looking for the bunt. We'll see. Immediately Jake Lamb plays in on the grass and Goldsmith ready to push off the bag but first he wants to hold Barnes. The bunt fouled away and the count 0 and 1. Chris Woodward goes to the the helmet goes through it all somewhere in there is a key and then whatever they sign cloth or skin or whatever. Oh and one. We're in the fifth. Giants lost they're on his way flying back from Colorado. Dodgers trying to tie them in first place with a win, but they're down 1 0. Stripling checking again has gotten the answer if the bunt is still on. Barnes trying to increase his lead. Ray watching him now to the plate and missing. One ball and one strike. With the runner going and then stopping, Stripling fouls it off. One and two, the count. Stripling wants to talk to his third base coach, Chris Woodward. He, as I mentioned earlier, a very smart young man. He majored in finance at Texas A&M. Invested his signing bonus into stocks and bonds. We asked him about it. Oh, he got stock in Facebook, Under Armour, Apple. Then he had Tommy John surgery. He was added to the Dodger 40 man roster. And at the same time, he began studying for what they call the Series 7 test to earn his license to trade. Three months later, he passed the seven hour test just before arriving at spring training. So, what a smart kid! If the pitching doesn't hold up, he's ready to work on Wall Street. Down he goes, two down, and Kike Hernandez coming up. The fielder, Kike Hernandez. That would be four strikeouts for Robbie Ray, but he has struck out the pitcher twice. Kike hitting 333, but he's even tougher than that against left hand pitching. TK is a 374 career hitter against left hand pitching. And ball one. One run, four hits for Arizona. No runs, two hits for the Dodgers. We're in the fifth. Dodgers with the tying run at first, but two out. Robbie Ray, Pride of Tennessee. Fastball line to center for a base hit. Stopping at second is Barnes. So Kike Hernandez wears out the left handers, and boy, he stung that thing in the center. And that'll bring up Yasiel Pui. So Hernandez base hit sends Barnes to second. Two out. Yasiel appeared. I don't know stiff or something was bothering him after that throw to the plate. If you were watching he kind of bent over at the waist twisted his shoulders and back and arm. So we'll see how he goes last time up he singled time before that struck out. So Puig trying to pick up somebody 
in a one nothing Arizona lead. And ball one. Boy an effortless 94 by the left hander Robbie Ray. Looks like he's just playing catch with Herman. And then you read the numbers. He's made 73 pitches meaning 21 pitches here in the fifth. Two on two out one nothing Arizona fastball lifted to left going back is Drury and now he has to come up for it. So it wasn't nearly hit as hard as it first appeared. The Puig the fly ball Dodgers can't get a man to get a base hit they're 0 for 18 with a runner in scoring position one nothing Arizona. Opening day at Dodger Stadium. Sandy Elfax made his only opening day start in his career. Won the game 4 0 against the Cardinals. Maury Wills had three hits. Frank Howard hit a home run. And Sandy went on to go 19 and 5. Let's go back to this one. Talking about Sandy Kopax that year, came up with a a stiff arm and there was a stage that year in 1964 Sandy was four and four and then all of a sudden he got all the wrinkles out and he went on to win 11 straight and wind up 19 and five there's a flare over the head of Kendrick over to get the ball is Kike and it's Brito with the flare single to left and Goldsmith coming up first baseman Paul Goldsmith. So Stripling has allowed one run and five hits and the Dodgers continue to flail away with runners in scoring position. Goldsmith grounded to short hit back to the box. The outfield has Thompson shaded a bit to right center and a strike. KK Hernandez is way over towards left center so they don't play Goldie to pull but he has so much power it really doesn't make any difference. He can reach the seats throughout the ballpark. Oh and one there goes the runner the pitch taken low the throw is late and offline. So Brito steals second and now Arizona has a couple of men to try to pick him up Goldsmith Peralta and Drury. J.P. Howell gets up in the Dodger bullpen. For Brito 
That's his first stolen base of the year. JP tuning up. Tough ball game. One nothing Arizona. Last year, the Dodgers beat Arizona eight out of ten. Pickoff look, but no play. One ball and one strike to Paul Goldschmidt. Just missed inside. Two and one. Paul, the first baseman for Arizona, five straight opening days. And he figures to do that more than five more. Slap foul. His hands have to be very quick. I mean, it's not just uh, brute strength. Because watch where the bat is. It's not ready to go. It looks like it's kind of hanging over his right shoulder. Drop it down. Not yet. Still not yet. There it goes. Two and two. And ground ball to short. Nice pick by Seeger. Makes the play to first. Looked over at third, but the ground ball got Brito over there. So Goldie is 0 for 3, but the D backs have a runner at third. One out, and David Peralta coming up. Peralta rounded to second and double the left. You know who uh, Peralta used to get himself going with some confidence? Rick Ankiel. Remember Rick? An outfielder. Went to the mound. Didn't quite work. Tried to go back to the outfield and never did finish up. Well, Peralta was signed by the same team St. Louis Cardinals battled for a couple of years just could not do it so they released him so he went all the way home but instead of giving up he talked with his dad concentrated on hitting and fought his way to become a successful big leaguer infield is up with a runner at third 0 and one one out. Peralta came into the game batting 303 in the dirt. Big moment for Ross Stripling when the Dodgers come up in the sixth. They'll have Gonzalez, Kendrick, and Seeger. One and one. One and two. Dodgers flailing away, being shut down through five innings, not able to come up with a base hit with a runner in scoring position throughout the series. So you know who they miss? Especially Andre Ethier. Two and two. Ethier. A career 327 hitter against Arizona. Andre born in Phoenix. Buster Posey hits 326 against Arizona. All right, two and two to Peralta, one out, one nothing Arizona, but they have Brito at third. Ground ball, here comes Brito, so the only play is to first. So Socrates brings it home. And it is two to nothing, Arizona. The fielder, Brandon Drury. So a good at bat for David Peralta. Now, Brandon Drury twice has grounded to third. So Stripling did a good job having a big hitter. 
though with the infield back it was just the out and the run scored. Good off speed change with a little break at the end of it. So Ahmed singled in a run and Peralta grounds out and picks up a run batted in. That's a foul ball to repeat for the Dodgers when they come up in the sixth inning. Adrian Gonzalez. Then Howie Kendrick. Corey Seager. Fast ball in there. So considering. Stripling made a lot of good pitches keeping balls on the ground. Arizona gets a run anyway and they lead two to nothing. Brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop online at choosenissan.com. And by Jack in the Box. Taste the bacon licious sourdough bacon ranch combo only at Jack in the Box. Dodgers down two to nothing. Bottom of the sixth inning. Adrian Gonzalez. To start it all, he's 0 for 2, runs up a little bit and fouls it off. 0 and 1. So Gonzalez looking either for off speed or for a breaking ball. He wouldn't be running up if he were looking fastball, that's for sure. 0 and 1. 0 and 2. Adrian trying to get the Dodgers started. They're 0 for 17 with a runner in scoring position. They haven't had many runners in scoring position tonight, but they are 0 for 17 in the series. No balls, two strikes. So Adrian totally fooled, I think, and to say that is a compliment for Robbie Ray because Adrian did not have a good Gonzalez swing in that at bat. So here's Kendrick. Five strikeouts now for Robbie Ray. Well, we told you he only allowed two runs, six innings against the Cubs in his first outing. Ball one. Tony LaRusa, Dave Stewart, the front office for the baseball operations taking in the game, and they'll. They'll go on the whole stretch. As we mentioned, Arizona has just really begun 20 straight days of playing. Toss in the the flying to grind. Line drive to right coming up and over and one hands it with a diving catch is David Peralta. Fine play by David. They got the run in in the sixth inning. 
So we have two down in the six. Corey Seeger coming up. Here's Peralta. Ball hit to his grub side, so that helped a little. So with two out, Seeger grounded hard. Actually, it was going to be a base hit, and Goldschmidt turned it into a double play. And then last time up, Corey hit back to the pitcher. Dodgers have had two hits since the second inning. No balls and two strikes. High fastball. Seeger going after it. So down go the Dodgers. Half a dozen strikeouts for Robbie Ray. And at the end of six, two to nothing, Arizona. This show the Giants here for the weekend then the Dodgers go out on the road trip they'll have three games with Atlanta three with Colorado and then they'll come home and play four with Miami three with San Diego so make your plans either to watch or to be right here with us. Well one of the things the Dodgers are doing certainly they're taking very good care of Ross Stripling so J.P. Howell has now been brought in to pitch the seventh inning. Stripling did very well two runs five hits but he also made 96 pitches they took him out with a no hitter going after a hundred so they're being very very careful understandably so here's Jake Lamb walked and flied to right breaking ball low I've been told that basically the Tommy John surgery takes 75 minutes and 18 months to come back. One ball and no strikes. So they're going to be taking very good care of raw scribbling. Of course that Tommy John surgery you hear about kids in high school now undergoing the surgery. Come back a speared nicely by Howell and then gets it over to Gonzalez. So Lamb losing a base hit on a good play by J.P. James Catch Phillip by name and using all three names he gets one big out. So Chris Herman the catcher coming up struck out and doubled and scored on a single by Ahmed. Lewis Coleman now gets up in the Dodger bullpen. Howell bends that breaking ball in. 0 and 1 the count. 
JP born in Modesto lives over in Phoenix. Originally signed by Kansas City out of the University of Texas. James Philip Howell has a lot of different pitches not only a fastball and a slider he has a knuckle curve he has a hard curve a split finger a cutter he has the whole store good pitch wow he turns that thing over though he's out in front of the hitter one and two. Thompson Ellis and Barnes do up in the bottom half in the dirt two and two Dodgers backing them up with Lewis Coleman in the pen Howell due to bat fourth in the seventh inning and Dave Roberts down to nothing gets a man ready figuring he'll bat for Howell. Two and two. And ball three. The action of the arm as Robbie Ray waits on deck. The action of the arm up here looks like most of the pitches are screwballs because he has to turn the arm over and throw in that knuckle curve. Three and two. And got him. So he takes care of Herman, and the batter will be the pitcher, Robbie Ray, who has struck out twice, pitcher, but he's Ray. pitching a gem. While Ross Stripling was in there, he allowed two runs, five hits, and struck out five. Oh and one. Robbie Ray through six innings has made 83 pitches and his career high is 110. He's gotten into the seventh inning only four times in his career. And that's his right. Oh and two. So the seventh inning in a sense will be a severe test perhaps against Robbie Ray. And the Dodgers have Thompson, Ellis, and Barnes do up, and then a hitter for Howell. No balls, two strikes, two out, bases empty. Stripling, two runs, five hits, a walk, and five Ks. One and two. Tried to golf it, couldn't do it, and the out recorded at first. So Howell does a good job. He makes a fine play on Lamb and then strikes out Herman and Ray. And we are heading for the bottom of the seven, two to nothing, Arizona.
Seventh inning for the Dodgers, two to nothing, Arizona. Due up will be Trace Thompson, who has walked and popped up. The only Dodger to get to third base. Ellis walked and flied to right, and Barnes has struck out and walked. J.P. Howell did a nice job. Came in 13 pitches, shut him down. Yimmy Garcia begins to tune up in the bullpen, and Robbie Ray back to work. Off speed, big move, and then a change. Thompson walked, popped up. Fastball and a hopper into left field. So Trace Thompson comes up with a base hit to go one for two. Remember, we figure seventh to the eighth inning will be a big That's challenge for Robbie. Ellis. And Chip Hale knows the background, knows the fact that he has not gotten beyond the seventh inning. Robbie now facing A.J. Ellis. That would be five walks given up by Robbie Ray. So he's getting them out, although his control is not 100%. Ball one down in the Arizona bullpen they get the right hander Randall Delgado and the left hander Andrew Chafin. We've seen them both in the series. One ball and no strikes. And another high fastball. Robbie has made 87 pitches. Stripling made 96 and they figured that's enough. Dodgers have four hits. Tried to golf what appeared to be a pretty good sinker. Two and one they count. Dodgers down two nothing. It's a manager's count two balls and one strike. So we'll see if the Dodgers want to play hit and run with Ellis. Ellis does a very good job of going to right field. And Segura is playing him more up the middle. Ball three. Austin Barnes, who has struck out and walked, waiting on deck. Three and one. Ellis flied to right last time up, also walked. And a fly ball to center. Waiting for it. Socrates Zuda tagging up Thompson, but he's not coming. So Ellis a fly ball one away. Second baseman, number 28. Austin, Austin Barnes. Barnes struck out and walked. For the Dodgers in the series. I mean they struggled last night. They did get a home run from Gonzalez and they beat Arizona three to one. But they scored only two runs in the first game and lost. Justin Turner now comes out on deck. He would bat for J.P. Howell. With Barnes stepping in. The so Yimmy getting ready. Barnes 0 for 1 playing second base tonight. In the dirt. Nice save by Chris Herman. Dodgers had Hernandez open the first inning with a walk. Hendrick opened up the second inning with a base hit. They didn't get another leadoff man on until here in the seventh. Change up. 2 and 0. Oh. Ray coming off allowing only two runs against the Cubs. He went six. Tonight he has the Dodgers shut down into the seventh. Well he's still throwing pretty hard but he's also struggling for the strike zone. Ninety three pitches and once again he's behind three and oh Chip Hale almost ready to come and get him. That's Matt Williams alongside of him. Chafin and Delgado 
in the pen. 3 0 pitch is outside. So the Dodgers have the tying runs aboard with one out and Justin Turner coming up. So let's see. Is Chip Hale going to let him hit a, a tiring left hander? I don't think so. So Justin Turner hit on the hands twice last night. Nick Ahmed comes in and says, Nice job. And Chip Hale will probably say, Nice going, but you're out of there. Yep, here comes Delgado. Good performance by the young left hander from Brentwood. That's Brentwood, Tennessee. We'll be right back. on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. And by Children's Hospital Los Angeles. We treat kids better. Two to nothing in favor of Arizona. Robbie Ray a little weary pitched a very tough ball game. He pitched 94 pitches. Meanwhile, just like all of the other Arizona pitchers, he has prevented the Dodgers to come up with an RBI with runners in scoring position. The Dodgers are 0 for 18 in the series. And Turner finds two on Thompson at second and Barnes at first. And low ball one. Hopefully a little turmoil of last night and the day before six hit batters and some hollering tonight just a good solid ball game. One ball and no strikes. And Delgado off the rubber. Josh Colmenter whom you expect to see in his series has been out on the DL but they'll get a little stronger when they get Josh back. Two on one out Delgado with the shiny white shoes joining Ahmed in the shoe department. Randall from Panama. Big fella, 6'3, 200. Big chopper foul. So one ball and one strike to Justin Turner. Justin could have used the rest after being hit on the hand. Forced in now to come up in a tough spot against a former starter who has been turned into a late inning reliever. They say and maybe Adrian could tell you Delgado has pretty much gotten rid of his curveball. Basically he'll throw left handers to change up 
and a pretty good slider to right handers. Fastball lined into left. Charging it is Drury. The throw coming to the plate is wide. Scoring is Thompson. Dodgers have runners at first and second. And it's now two to one Arizona. And that's the first hit with a runner in scoring position for the Dodgers. One for 19. They'll leave it to Turner. Sharp single left. Base hit in the ribby. The run is charged to the starter, Robbie Ray. Now the Dodgers have Austin Barnes at second, representing the tying run. So Delgado gives up the hit. The run is charged to Ray. Now Mike Butcher, formerly the pitching coach with the Angels, Coming back up to talk to Delgado. We told you about Kike Hernandez wearing out left handers, though he is facing a right hander in Delgado in a tough spot. Walk, fly to right, single to center. All right, the meeting is broken up. Delgado and all of the pitchers have been allowed to do it, blowing on their hands. Kike Hernandez is one for one in the past against Delgado. Off the plate, ball one. So the Dodgers, one for 19 with runners in scoring position. Now they got the idea. Thompson scored the run on the base hit by Turner. So now the tying run belonging to Austin Barnes out there at second base. Two and up. There's Barnes and there's Turner. Delgado, 26 years old. And that's smoked into left center. In easily comes Barnes. Here comes Turner. And the Dodgers have turned it around to lead three to two on a double by QK Hernandez. Both runs are charged to Robbie Ray. Hernandez belongs to Delgado, and Delgado apparently is not going to be around very long. Yasiel Puig will be the hitter. Chip Hale is out to the mound, takes the ball, and a downcast Delgado heads for the locker room. So the pride of Panama comes in, gives up a single to Turner, the pinch hitter, a double to Hernandez, and he gives up the go-ahead run. Dodgers lead 3-2. We'll be right back.
called in with the Dodgers leading Arizona 3-2, and they bring in a left-hander to face Yasiel Puig. Then again, first base is open, and you have the left-hand hitter, Adrian Gonzalez. Only one out. So Puig coming up. Meanwhile, Robbie Ray, who pitched well enough, struggling getting the ball over the plate. He walked six, struck out six, and then Delgado gave it up. Now Andrew Chapin out of Ohio, a left-hander who had Tommy John surgery back in 2010. A little interesting that they bring in a left-hander with Puig up there. T.K. Hernandez with that ringing double to give the Dodgers the lead. So here goes Chafin. Chafin has pitched in his young career better on the road than at home. He's been dynamite on the road. Fastball. Fastball at 92. Chafin went to school at Kent State. In high school, he pitched in a game where he struck out 19. He was so good in high school, they retired his uniform number. Throws the fastball a lot. And a good one coming up. 0 and 2 to count to Pui. When Chafin made his debut in 2014, pitched five scoreless innings, had 10 ground balls. He was truly in command, made a great impression. Fastball, slider, changeup. That missed one and two to Puig. Yasiel struck out, single to left, and flied to left. Three runs, six hits for the Dodgers, two runs, five hits for Arizona, and we're in the bottom of the seventh. Remember the Giants lost, they're probably here by now. A Dodger win would put them into a tie with San Francisco. Breaking ball. Looked like a slider in on the hands, and Yasiel really turned on it. Remember the last night if you were watching De La Rosa appeared to be angry he threw four fastballs at Puig they were all 96 97 and then he threw a slider up and Puig singled the left field one and two. Not much difference for Puig between left handers and right handers. Yasiel is hitting 291 against left hand pitching and 298 against right handers. So he's got a left hander up there. Hernandez backing away from the bag and Puig trying to pick him up. Gonzalez on deck. One and two. Fastball slap to the right side into right field. Here comes Hernandez. Peralta's throw is offline. Down to second goes Puig, and the Dodgers lead four to two. Hey, viva Cuba! Viva Yasiel. The Goldstein couldn't get it. Puig, a ribby and a run batted in. Four runs, seven hits for the Dodgers. Two runs, five hits for Arizona. Turner scores on the double by Hernandez. So Ray gave up two. Delgado has given up two. So the Dodgers have had three clutch base hits against the bullpen in the seventh inning after two walks that were given up by Robbie Ray. We good job of hitting 
going the other way. Four runs, seven hits for the Dodgers. 2 5 0. Oh, Gonzalez at ground ball into right field. Creed looks back. Now he comes. Peralta's throw, not nearly in time. And the Dodgers lead 5 to 2. So Arizona's bullpen has collapsed. It's been the other way around coming into the game. So Chafin gives up singles to Puig and Gonzalez. Hernandez scored. So two runs charged to Robbie, three charged to Delgado. And now here's Howie Kendrick. Singled, hit back to the box, and lost a possible base hit. To right field. Ground ball for one, and they will get two. And that is the long look to Lum. So Puig is in there. The Dodgers come up with three. It was Turner really who started it with a pinch hit single to catch in one. Then KK doubled, and that got the Dodgers well in shape, and now leading 5 2. Who started the game at third base moves over to play as familiar second base, relieving Barnes. Justin Turner, who came off the bench to get the base hit, come up with a key hit. He stays in the game at third, and Yimmy Garcia will take over on the mound. Yimmy in four games, struggling like all of the other members except Kenley Jansen. So the Dodgers take a 5 2 lead thanks to a big inning. Well, Dave Roberts now entrusting the game. Huge hit by Kike Hernandez. So Thompson scored, Barnes scored, Turner scored, Hernandez scored, and Puig scored. On one. Yachiel tonight. Two singles, one to left, one to right. All the way to the backstop. Nick Ahmed struck out single to right. His base hit drove in a run in the fifth inning. The number nine hitter will be followed by Segura, Brito, and Goldsmith. One and one. 
slider and he hung it. Line drive but right at Kike. Dangerous pitch got away with it one down. Enjoy MLB.TV Premium for a new low price in 2016. You can watch every out of market game of all 30 teams live in true HD on over 400 supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply, but visit MLB.TV for details. One away, Segura singled and has gone out twice, one for three. Gene single leading off the game. Interesting to bring up that point about Sakura. The top three National League clubs in getting the leadoff man on base the Cubs, Arizona, and the Dodgers. Almost hit him. The Cubs have Dexter Fowler leading off. Arizona Gene Segura and the Dodgers Chase Utley and T.K. Hernandez mostly. Two and one. And slap to the right side. So two down here in the eighth inning. Socrates Brito will be coming up. Brito. Brito hit into a double play, flied to left, single to left, and scored a run. On deck, the big man, Paul Goldsmith. He paid attendance tonight, 40,879. 40,879, breaking ball strike. Goldsmith tonight grounded to short, hit back to the box, grounded to short again. So the big man 0 for 3. Fouled away. Dodgers five runs on eight hits. Arizona two runs on five hits. Oh, and to the count. High and foul back. Brito from Azua in the Dominican bounced one ball and two strikes. Brito six two and about two hundred left handed all the way. Tried to wait for that by the time he did. He was hitting late. One and two. Brito's only 23. He'll be 24 in September. Slap to center. Now that's important. They're trailing five to two. And now here comes Goldie with a run or a board. First baseman number 44, Paul Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt 0 for 3 tonight. Looking at last night's game, he was 0 for 3 with a walk. So the Dodgers have held him 0 for 6. In the eighth inning of game one, he hit the home run. And he hit it on a 3 and 0 pitch. Foul back. Well, let's see about Jimmy Garcia. 
and Paul Goldsmith. Goldsmith is hitting a cool 429 against him. Three for seven with a double. 0 and 1. Fast ball, and he got it in there at 93. That was a tough pitch to take. Adam Libertor still throwing in the Dodger bullpen. 0 oh and 2. Holding that bat where the end of it looks like it's almost going to point to the ground. Someone else hits like that, and another very good hitter by the name of Buster Posey. He hangs that thing over his right shoulder. There it goes. One ball and two strikes. Got him looking. Two fastballs in a row, much to the surprise of the big first baseman. So Yimmy strikes him out. One, two, three, and at the end of seven and a half, it's five two Dodgers. Move. They bring in a new pitcher, Mike Bushman, and they also bring in Chris Owings. That way they can put the pitcher in the second slot and keep Owings down in the lineup where he might be able to do some damage. Matt Bushman out of St. Louis, Missouri, went to school at Vanderbilt and was a 15th round selection by the San Diego Padres about nine, ten years ago. Bushman born in 84 pitching professionally since 06 and the first pitch a chopper to the right side from Seeger and Segura takes care of it so one away in the eighth inning one thing that should be pointed out is Kenley Jansen who got five outs last night. We'll see if he's getting ready, apparently so, to pitch the ninth. Dave Roberts checking in, and Kenley said, I'm able to do it. It's early in the season. I'm well rested, very strong. So he'll be coming in. That's a strike. Garcia made 19 pitches. If the Dodgers indeed take two out of three, and Yimmy, a uh, nice inning. Paul Goldsmith, who normally torments them, and remember he hit that home run on the 3 0 pitch, but that's the only hit that Goldie has had in this series. 1 4 12. So the Dodgers have done a tremendous job, better than they ever do, really, 
to shut him down. So Ross Stripling won six, allowed two, check swing. Looks like Howell might pick up the victory. Then Garcia, and I assume Kenley Jansen, Kike Hernandez with that huge double. Fast ball hit to right, going back on the ball, turning now is Peralta to make the catch. Two down, and the batter will be A.J. Ellis. So look That's ahead for Arizona in the ninth. They are due to send up Peralta, Drury, and Lamb. Jock Peterson out on deck a strike interesting phone call it was made by David Price of the Tampa Bay Rays went to his buddy a teammate in Vanderbilt by the name of Matt Bushman and Price was saying Do you remember the girl that you met a few years back when she was a sports anchor and Nashville's WKRN that would be channel two. And you were a pitcher at Vanderbilt. Her name was Sarah Walsh. She interviewed me a few times, he said. I don't remember too much about her. Bushman said, I was awfully nervous when I met her. Well, David Price said, We understand that she admires you. And for Bushman, that was a little bit of a surprise taken by the fact that this lovely girl. Admired him. Well, turned around. They were married on a cold day in Sarasota. One ball and two strikes. Fast ball that took off. So, as Bushman said, it's just funny how things come back around. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Bottom of the eighth, Dodgers lead 5 2. Little ground ball. Here comes the shortstop, Ahmed, to make the play. All right, the Dodgers go very quietly in the eighth inning. So here come the D backs, Peralta, Drury, and Lamb after this, along with Kenley Jansen. Two out of three from Arizona and then face the Giants tomorrow night with each team tied with the other for first place. Henley Jansen has worked three and two third innings in that time he has struck out five and his ERA is point zero eight. Last night he came in and for the first time in his career had a five pitch save. After the game he said no he felt fine. He said 
Skipper Doc as they call him can come back. I'm well rested. So they came right back. He'll face David Peralta who grounded out doubled and grounded out again. Last night Jansen came in in the eighth inning. And got the five outs. Peralta last night came in as a pinch hitter in the eighth inning to face Kenley Jansen and struck out. Drury on deck had one hit but flied out against Jansen. 2 and 0. So it's been Stripling who turned in another nice job. He went six, made 96 pitches. Howell came in, pitched an inning. Garcia came in and pitched an inning. And now here's Jansen. 2 and 0. Three and oh. Of course the big pitch for Kenley Jansen. No secret. A great cutter. A fastball that just moves a lot like this, like Mariano Rivera. Three and oh. In there. Dodgers put the diamond defense up. This time though they have Corey Seager at second Justin Turner is all alone. Foul back three and two. Usually Seager the shortstop stays at short. Turner moves over. Now they've moved Seager to the other side of second base. Little ground ball. Here comes Kendrick. Makes the play. Good hustle by Peralta. Almost legged it out. So one out. The, fielder, number 27, Brandon Drury. the left fielder, Brandon Drury, coming up. Twice he grounded to third. Last time up in the sixth inning, he struck out against Stripling. On deck, Jake Lamb, left hand batter. Boy, a lot of movement before Jansen delivered that pitch. He got everything behind it. And everything for him is about 255 pounds. Big overhand changeup. Wow. Boy, was there a lot of movement on that delivery. Look at that. Big stride, and here comes the change. 0 oh 2. Boy, that, that big. Now you come right back with the express. So, two out in the ninth inning. Kenley Jansen, full control. And the batter is Jake Lamb, who flied to right. J.P. Howell made a good play to get him. Lamb struck out last night against Jansen to end the game. Foul back on one. So the Dodgers five runs, eight hits, and no errors. The D backs two runs, six hits, one error. Puig had a good night. Turner had a big pinch hit single. Kike Hernandez, a very big double. Dodgers scored five. And now one pitch away, and Jansen at 95. Arizona's just stunned. They're leaning on the railing, watching the big man go to work yet again. Crowd on its feet, 40,000. 879 and the Giants here tomorrow night Clayton Kershaw Madison Bumgarner fastball a little high
Kenley trying to turn out the lights. Giants lost 11 to 6. Dodgers should tie them for tomorrow. Foul back. Fastball coming back to the second level at 93. So Clayton Kershaw getting ready. Meanwhile, Jansen made 13 pitches last night. He's made 13 pitches now. One and two. Breaking ball hit up the middle. Seeger behind the bag. There you have it. So Jansen picks up a save. Big double by Kike Hernandez. Two singles by Yasiel Puig. Pinch hit single that drove in run from Justin Turner. Put it all together. The Dodgers take two out of three, and they are tied first place with the Giants, and they'll go head to head for the weekend. The play of the game, oh, I think it was Kike Hernandez. He had singled in the fifth inning, but in the seventh inning, he doubled at the gap in left center, and that scored a couple. Turner and Barnes coming home, and the Dodgers broke it open. And with a five run inning, they do it walking away. Jansen made 14 pitches, 13 last night, and that ought to do it. So tomorrow night, going to be out here with us? I hope so. Kershaw, Bumgarner, till then, we wish you all a very pleasant good evening, everybody.